What's going on, Summoners? My name is Crumbs, and today we're going to be diving into episode one of our Built Different series. In case you're not familiar with it, we use this series to break down powerful Korean builds with a fun minigame on the side. Be sure to stay tuned so you don't miss out. On your left, you'll see two bars with one indicating risk and the other carry potential. These are color coordinated to help you figure out how useful yet difficult the builds are. Okay, let's not waste any more time and dive right into the video. Starting us off strong, we've got Rengar Top. Due to his extremely oppressive laning phase, some of the best Korean players have begun picking him. He offers amazing dueling potential, strong tower taking power, and is able to constantly hunt people down with his ultimate. If you're looking for an aggressive bruiser in the top lane, be sure to give Rengar a chance. Taking a look at his popular Korean build, you'll be running Ignite and Teleport as your summoner spells. For your runes, be sure to take Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Demolish, and Unflinching. These runes will give you a solid early game while providing powerful dueling later on. When it comes to your items, you'll be building Divine Sunder, Defensive Boots of Choice, either Dead Man's or Force of Nature, and then grab Black Cleaver, Death Stance, and finish off with Maw of Malmortius. Rengar can be a bit unforgiving with his mechanics and is pretty difficult to master. On top of this, if you fail to ward properly and don't manage your vision, you can get ganked on repeat and easily become useless. That being said, this build is insanely powerful. When played correctly, it allows Rengar to 1v9 games due to his great damage and survivability. Plus, if you practice it enough, he doesn't really have any counters. Moving on to our next pick, we've got Akali Top. With Jax and Kaysan to being strong, Akali has naturally reappeared in the top lane. While her early game may be a bit weak, she scales incredibly hard and can easily outduel any of these bruisers as well as multiple tanks. Even with her bruiser-esque build, she still offers enough damage to one-shot squishy carries during teamfights. If you need an AP option in the top lane, be sure to check her out. Diving into your build, be sure to take Ignite and Teleport as your summoner spells. Your runes will consist of Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Second Wind, and Overgrowth. These runes will give you nice trading patterns while also letting you scale into the mid game. Looking at your items, you'll be building Sork Shoes, Divine Sunder, Demonic Embrace, Rabadon's Death Cap, Void Staff, and finish off with your choice of Death Stance for Armor or Maw for Magic Resistance. Akali's incredibly complex kit makes her hard to master and even harder to play. On top of this, her laning phase can be a bit volatile if you're not careful with navigating your matchups. On the bright side, she does offer the ability to shred tanks and squishies alike, while also working as a pseudo frontline for her team. Just be sure to use your W properly. Before we continue on to our next Korean builds, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. With our new $7.99 monthly subscription, you can take your gameplay to the next level with some brand new course and bootcamp content. If courses and lessons aren't your thing though, don't worry, we have challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 just ready to help you out. As a member, you'll even get a 10% coaching discount. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the Pro Guides family. Moving on to the jungle, we've got Zack. He's been dominating the meta for a while now, but to no one's surprise, challenger Korean junglers have found a way to make him even stronger. Zack is one of the few viable tank junglers in the meta, and he deals quite a bit of damage due to his HP scalings. Well, it seems that giving him a few defenses but completely leaning towards his AP scalings is amazing. He offers great ganks, a healthy clear, and a lot of damage. What isn't there to like? Taking a look at your build, you're going to be running Ignite and Smite as your summoner spells. You'll be grabbing Moss Stomper Seedling as your starting jungle item. For your runes, be sure to take Aftershock, Font of Life, Conditioning, Revitalize, Triumph, and Last Stand. These runes will give you the extra stats you need to stay tanky while also providing your team with some nice utility. Finally, your build will consist of Sunfire Aegis, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Rift Maker, Spirit Visage, Demonic Embrace, and finish off with a Gargoyle Stoneplate. Zack's simple kit allows him to clear the jungle quickly and safely while also being extremely forgiven overall. While he may not offer the carry potential of someone like Rengar, he's still able to dominate games and can be self-sufficient. With his core items, he becomes an unkillable powerhouse that can easily destroy the enemy backline thanks to his HP and AP scalings. Moving on to our next jungle pick, we've got none other than Gragas. This drunken brawler has made a comeback on the Korean servers and for once, it's not with Predator. Instead, they look to turn Gragas into an AP bruiser that provides a ton of utility and a great jungle clear. With his incredible sustain, damage, and teamfight disruption, Gragas is an absolute menace in the right hands. If you want a tanky jungle but don't want to fully commit to someone like Zac, 
then be sure to give Gragas a try. Diving into his build, you're going to be running Flash and Smite as your summoner spells. Similar to Zac, you'll be starting with Moss Stomper Seedling as your Smite of choice. For your runes, be sure to take Face Rush, Nimbus Cloak, Transcendence, Water Walking, Magical Footwear, and Cosmic Insight. These runes will give you some insane mobility, so you can stick to targets and disengage completely. When it comes to your items, you'll be building Iceborne Gauntlet, Sork Shoes, Demonic Embrace, Zhanyas, Rabidons, and finish off with a Force of Nature. Gragas is hardly a risky pick thanks to his beefy health bar, his damage reduction ability, and his overall mobility thanks to his E and Face Rush. Similar to Zack, his carry potential isn't maxed out, but it's more than enough to get the job done. He is easily able to frontline for his team, pick off enemies, and can even make some huge plays thanks to his E Flash and Ulti combo. Overall, he can be a reliable, well-rounded champion for just about anyone's pool. Taking us into the mid lane, we've got Diana. Ever since her rework a long time ago, Diana has seen a significant increase in play rate. This has created a ton of build options for her, and she usually finds a way to abuse new items. In the past, it was her infamous Sunfire and Nasher's Tooth build. Well, some of the best Korean Diana players have innovated yet another build by instead having her grab Radiant Virtue rather than Sunfire. Moving on to the build itself, be sure to take Flash and Teleport as your summoner spells. For your runes, you'll be taking Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Shield Patch, and Revitalize. These runes will provide you with amazing skirmish power, as well as some survivability. For your items, you'll be building Sork Shoes, Nasher's Tooth, Radiant Virtue, Rabadon's Deathcap, Zhanya's, and a Void Staff. While Diana can have a few rough matchups, her overall laning phase can be pretty safe. With her long-range Q, shielding from W, and her early spiking build, she's not that risky of a pick. Alongside this, she offers amazing carry potential thanks to her game-changing ultimate. During a teamfight, she can not only nuke an entire area, but she'll also buff her allies with her Radiant Virtue. Overall, if you can get to mid-game without falling behind, the game should be yours to carry. Moving on to our next mid lane pick, we've got Galio. This giant gargoyle has always been known for his ability to counter mages and to impact the map with his ultimate. Alongside this, he offers great wave clear and doesn't require a ton of gold to come online thanks to his high base damage and amazing utility. Overall, if you need a supportive champion that can help your team out, Galio always gets the job done. Diving into his build, you're going to be taking Flash and Ghost as your summoner spells. For your runes, be sure to take Aftershock, Shield Bash, Second Wind, Unflinching, Minion Dematerializer, and Cosmic Insight. These runes will provide you with defensive stats, sustain, and early wave clear. When it comes to your items, you'll be building Rod of Ages, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Seraph's Embrace, Demonic Embrace, Force of Nature, and either Gargoyles for defensive stats or Rabidons for damage. Galio can feel a bit risky due to his build taking quite a bit to come online, specifically with how long Rod of Ages takes to stack. That being said, his overall utility and tankiness offers a safe enough laning face that he isn't super volatile. With said utility, he's able to carry games as he locks enemies down front lines for his allies and deals a nice chunk of damage. Overall, he strikes a nice balance between carry and risk. Now before we move on to our final few builds of the video, let's not forget about our favorite pro guides tradition. Today we want to ask you all what is one champion you want to become popular? Regardless of who it may be, make sure to let us know in the comment section down below. Nonetheless, let's dive back into the video. Returning to our list, we've got our only AD carry pick, and it's Draven. This axe-tossing executioner is known for his insane early game damage and great scaling. A damage boost ability, an attack speed steroid, and a global ultimate? I mean, what isn't there to like? Just make sure you don't get too cocky with your high damage. Okay, looking at his build, you're going to be taking Flash and Exhaust as your summoner spells. For your runes, be sure to take Lethal Tempo, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, Last Stand, Eyeball Collection, and Treasure Hunter. These runes will give you amazing skirmish potential, while also letting you snowball with bonus AD and gold. Finally, for your items, you're going to be building Essence Reaver, Berserkers, Greaves, Infinity Edge, Bloodthirster, Shieldbow, and finish off with a Death Stance. Draven's kit makes him a bit difficult to play as he is forced to play around his axe juggling mechanic. On top of this, his volatile playstyle can make him feel extremely feast or famine. On the bright side, the new Infinity Edge makes it so that he can rush Infinity Edge second after his cheap first item. From here, he can snowball into a Bloodthirster. Overall, Draven has become far stronger and can easily 1v9 games with just a slight lead. Moving on to our support pick, we've got Leona. While it may feel like Leona has been out of the spotlight for a while, it doesn't mean she's a bad pick by any means. She offers some of the lowest cooldown CC in the game, great damage, and some amazing defensive stats. 
On top of this, Leona is not hard to play at all and can easily be picked up within a few games. Diving into her build, you're going to want Flash and Ignite as your summoner spells. For your runes, you'll be taking Glacial Augment, Hextech Flash Traption, Minion Dematerializer, Cosmic Insight, Bone Plating, and Unflinching. These runes will give you great playmaking potential as well as useful defensive stats. When it comes to your items, you'll be picking up Bulwark as your support item, then grabbing Radiant Virtue, Lucidity Boots, Anathema's Chains, Thorn Mill, and Knight's Vow. Leona is an extremely safe pick that provides a ton of survival tools thanks to her CC and defense boosting W. When it comes to carrying games, she can lock down the target with ease thanks to her low cooldown CC and Glacial. Plus, Radiant will further boost her CDR to make it even easier. Last but certainly not least, we've got a powerful combo that has been extremely successful in Korea. That's right, summoners, we're talking about Kindred Jungle and Karma Mid. These two work hand in hand as they're able to take on any skirmish and can easily roam the map together. Karma's high wave prio paired with Kindred's great early damage makes them a force to be reckoned with. On top of this, they only get stronger as the game goes on. Karma can easily buff up Kindred while they take over the game through insane mobility and damage. Overall, if you're looking for a powerful duo to abuse, this one is perfect. Let's start by looking at Kindred's build. For your summoner spells, you'll be going Flash and Smite. Be sure to start the game with Scorch Claw Pup as your smite of choice. For your runes, you'll be going Press the Attack, Triumph, Legend Alacrity, Coup de Gras, Eyeball Collection, and Treasure Hunter. These runes will give you great skirmishing power and a decent snowball. Finally, your items are going to consist of Kraken Slayer, Berserkers, Greaves, Navori Quick Blades, Bloodthirster, Rapid Fire Cannon, and finish off with Lord Dominic's Regards. Moving on to Karma's build, you're going to be taking Flash and Teleport as your summoner spells. For your runes, be sure to take Summon Airy, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Scorch, Bone Plating, and Revitalize. These runes will help you support Kindred while also giving you nice poke in lane. When it comes to your items, you'll be building Radiant Virtue, Lucidity Boots, Chem Tech, Putrefier, Zhonya, Staff of Flowing Water, and finish off with Rabadon's Death Cap. Karma has an extremely safe laning phase with amazing wave clear, which in turn helps provide Kindred with some much needed safety. Kindred is also able to clear the jungle fast while staying healthy enough for skirmishes. When it comes to carrying games, these two max out the bar thanks to their great synergy. Karma can easily set up ganks to get Kindred fed, and later on, she provides massive shields for them. Overall, these two are hard to beat early and become nearly unkillable in the late game. And that sums up our video for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to join our ProGuides family over at ProGuides.com where we offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you just won't catch anywhere else. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, good luck on the Rift.